What's up? Think International, Jeff Morris here. I'm with Pastor Jay Hazlip from the Sanctuary Church in Huntington Beach, California. How you doing? Oh, great. Great. I'm, I'm stoked you guys are here. Man, I'm stoked to be here. Yeah. Uh, you guys are doing an incredible work here in this area. Um, and you guys have grown like crazy. And you're very outreach oriented. What are you guys doing to reach out to your community and the culture? Well, there's a couple of different things. One is uh, uh, there's the very organic. It's just natural. Uh, people are just radically having encounters with Jesus and they're going back into their world. And, and as a result of that, people are wanting to come to church and they're inviting their friends to come to church. Right. That's probably the majority of the way it happens. Uh -huh. But then we do other things like uh, outreaches. We put a best trick contest, skateboard contest on that's uh, in the industry. Right. And, you know... Uh, Fuel TV comes and films it. A lot of people come, have huge sponsors. Wow. Uh, we do that. We do, uh, we feed people uh, every weekend. We right. give food away. We just feed them. We go into prisons. We go into the local jails. Uh, we go out Dang. into the parks yeah. and uh, once a month and feed the homeless, minister to the homeless. Um, that's some of the things we do. Is there a little bit of a strategy behind a lot of that? That outreachy stuff, you know, you said skateboard. Obviously, Huntington Beach <coughs> surf skate culture like crazy. Yeah, like, um, you know, I'm a skater. Yeah. I, I've yeah. grown up skating. Right, I've right. skated for all my life. And um, so we'll be doing a huge event coming up in a couple of months down by Huntington Beach Pier, the amphitheater. Yeah. Thousands and thousands, probably around 10,000 people will come to it. It'll be music, skating, testimonies, sure. preaching. And um, so, yeah, that's very strategic. You yeah. know, it's all designed to reach our community, influence our community. Right. Um, you know, we'll do a best trick contest. Yeah. And we just market that like everywhere, crazy. all over this region, Los Angeles, Orange County. We market it. Uh, we give $1,000 away to the first place winner. Wow. We create a killer obstacle. Like uh, the last one we had, we got a car that was donated that yeah. was ready to go to the junkyard. Sure, sure. And uh, we put a, had a huge launch ramp or we had a drop-in ramp like yeah. a quarter pot. And then we had a launch ramp where you could actually launch over the top of the car, sure. do a trick yeah. and have a landing ramp. Yeah, yeah. And then we took a big old rail and welded it to the car. So you could nice. either yeah, yeah. you could come off the launch ramp onto right. the rail or just do some kind of kick flip over the car. Yeah. And uh, it, we had about a thousand people come out for the best trick contest. Nice. And then before we give away the prizes and announce the winner, uh, we just preach the gospel and give the altar call. That's, that's incredible. Yeah. So it's not just we're throwing out a skate park and seeing what happens, but there's real thought and effort put into this. Oh, it's, Teams of people and, yeah. and the whole deal. It takes a lot of work. Um, you <coughs> leverage, um, it sounds like, and this is a, I, think, I think it's an incredible thing, you leverage your past as a professional skater. You leverage your past as, as um, some of your staff were professional skaters. Mm -hmm. um, some would say that's kind of cheap or cheating. What would you say? Um, <laughs> well, go for it. I go mean, for if it, it. Yeah, if it right. you yeah. know, if it's there and you got yeah. it, why not? I mean, to me, that would be uh, that'd be foolish not to use exactly. it. Exactly. I mean, yeah. that's yeah. like, okay, we want to reach people. Right. Yeah. I've got in a very, I've got a very effective uh, tool to do it. Sure. And to not utilize it, that's right. not being a good steward. Amen. You know, that's not being a wise fisherman of men. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, I'm not going to put on a golf tournament. I don't golf. <laughs> I could put on a putt putt golf tournament. I've had putt putt, -putt golf. Putt -putt you know golf. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So I'm not going to like break out the clubs and have right. a big tournament and at the right, end of the dude, tournament yeah. give an altar call. Right. You know, because I don't know <laughs> golfing. Yeah. But I do know skateboarding. I yeah. do know surfing. I do yeah. know music. I know that culture. You know the culture, yeah. And so, you know, the very thing God brought me out of, mm -hmm. God is now turned around and using me to help bring others out of. That's powerful. You know? That's powerful. And it, it's, it's happening like crazy. I mean, uh, you, guys are, you guys have grown by over 500% in the past three years. Mm -hmm. You are, um, and that's mainly uh, either new converts or people that have been away from the Lord for a long time yeah. coming back. Very little, very little like people coming in from other churches. Right, yeah, yeah. Not, not a whole lot of uh, yeah. transition growth. Yeah. Um, that's messy, bro. Yeah. That gets real messy. How, how do you guys handle that? How do you handle that? Well, 
you know, one of the things I tell our church, I would never want to have a church. I'm not saying everybody has sure. to want what I exactly. want, but right, right. I would never want a church where you feel so safe that you could come to the altar and leave your purse sitting in the seat, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, one time, uh, I mean, it, it's heartbreaking when something like this happens, but one time a lady's purse, uh, the, her money got stolen out of it. Right. You know, and that broke my heart, her money got stolen. Right. But on the other hand, I was excited because, yeah, we, we've yeah. thieves are coming to our church. That's who we want. Right, right. You know? Right. Uh, yeah, it does get messy. You know, a church is kind of like a hospital. Right. You know, sometimes you got people who make an appointment. Mm -hmm. The doctor tells you to be here on Monday, 9 o'clock. You mm -hmm. walk through the front doors. Yeah. You know, but then also you got people who come through the emergency room doors. Sure. Emergency room doors are, it, it's chaotic, it's crazy. Right. Um, and we're probably like, more like the emergency room kind of church. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, we've had people who get saved and right in the altar, they have a radical encounter with Jesus and they turn around and look at you and you can tell their eyes and their countenance is shining. Right. And they're like the Holy Spirit has radically touched them. And they start cussing. They're like, man, blankety blank, Jesus just touched me. You know? Yeah, man. So, you know, I don't say, man, you shouldn't cuss. Right. I look at them and say, that's awesome, man. Just hang on to Jesus and let's go. Yeah, yeah. You know? And you guys are also incredibly <laughs> intentional at the same time. You guys have created a whole track that once they are at that altar thing, it's not like high fives and see you later, man, come back next week. But you guys, what, what is it you guys actually do to get them plugged in and a part of the Exactly, the we, you know, we have a simulation pathway and mm -hmm. actually we have, it, it can go up to over a year long in mm -hmm. terms of the whole discipleship process. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't have to go that long, but it's there for them. And we have four steps, you know, when they first give their life to the Lord. Uh, every Sunday we have a workshop that runs. There's right. four workshops. You just go in at the end of worship. You go into that classroom. And uh, if you go to four, four of those workshops, mm -hmm. then then you graduate to the next step. Okay, right. You know, which we want people to get baptized in water. Uh, another step is get involved. Put your hands to the plow. Let's serve. And then the fourth step is our Sanctuary Leadership Institute where uh, we just continue, that's where you can actually go for over a year okay. and continued education and being discipled and growing in the Lord. That's incredible. Yeah. Uh, speaking <coughs> a, kind of a little bit to that on, on your own personal journey, because uh, you know, a lot of our, our audience, of course, are pastors, leaders. Um, a lot of them are too, just young people or people that are really new in the ministry that are really trying to, to grow themselves. Mm -hmm. um, you didn't just go from being a professional skater uh, drug addict to pastoring and overseeing a, a growing, multiplying church with its planning churches and raising up leaders. Mm -hmm. If you could, just a, kind of a quick synopsis of, of your own growth as a leader, what were some of the steps that you took to become the leader that you are today? Yeah, well, you know, I, I, got, I had a radical encounter with Jesus, you know, the yeah. night I got saved. I, like you mentioned, you know, I was this skater, drug addict. I've yeah. uh, been trying to change my life. Jesus radically intervened in my life yeah. like you know Saul on the road to uh, you know when yeah. the power of God yeah. came down and just right, changed right. him right and that's what happened to me and um, and not long after that God called me into the ministry and and I didn't have so much this formal discipleship right. mentorship mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. though I did have great people in my life the gentleman who led me to the Lord uh, he 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 was there for me. But what happened was, I just had a hunger. Yeah. Man, I had a hunger to know Jesus, wanted to walk with Jesus. I got me a big Bible, you know, started carrying this big Bible around with me right, everywhere I right, went. Right. And, you know, not boastingly, but just, just saying this was my real experience that, yeah. you know, I probably averaged reading the Bible in the first year, six hours a day. Wow. You know, that's, I had my Bible with me everywhere I went. I just read it and read it and read it. And I prayed, that's, I mean, I immersed myself in everything that had to do with Jesus. Everything yeah. about my life, I just totally immersed into that. And, um, you know, and just out of my relationship with the Lord, ministry began to happen. And mm. so I went from being an evangelist, because that's what I was for a long time. Right, right. So I went from being evangelist to God really began to put it in my heart, return to Southern California and start a church. We started in a community center. 
and I started with a handful of very broken people. Yeah. And and really they 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 didn't want to grow too much in the Lord. Sure. They just wanted to know that Jesus loved them. Right. And yeah. they didn't really have to change a whole lot, you know. <laughs> and so most I think of that's those the majority of the church yeah, in general. Yeah. Most of those yeah. folks yeah. are still not with us, you know. <laughs> Um, yeah. But if you are, yeah. and um, so yeah. it just kind of grew from there, right. you know. I just continued. People got saved. And I raised up leaders, and uh, you know, just really sought the Lord for wisdom. You know, God's really directed. You know, the Bible says that, um, except the Lord build the house, they that labor labor in vain. Sure. And I've honestly tried to be as sensitive as possible to the leadership yeah. of the Holy Spirit. Right. Tried to obey Him. I mean, anything that Jesus put in my heart in terms of what He wanted me to do, I've always tried to seek Him for His wisdom right? and the next steps, what I need to do, what I don't need to do. And, you know, some things we've tried and it yeah. worked. Some things we tried, it didn't work. It didn't work, yeah. 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 What, what, were, what, something along the way that didn't work? Because, <clears throat> you know, we, we, people learn as much from our mistakes as, yeah. as, you know, they do from successes. Um. Something like, I mean, you... You know, like a dumb tax you've paid, just yeah. did this, whoa, we'll never do that again. Yeah, yeah. what was something, uh, something that wasn't didn't work? Let me see here, I'm trying to think, what did not work? You know, we've, we've started, um, you, you know, just different groups or something sure. like that. And, you know, uh, and it just wasn't for us, you know, it didn't work. And, right. You know, or a particular kind of ministry, and we were... Uh, like for example, we did uh, celebrate recovery. Right. You know, celebrate recovery uh, just didn't work for us. Right. Uh, because our church, uh, but our church is filled with these all these addicts. Yeah. Filled yeah. with alcoholics, filled with drug right, heroin right, addicts, right. meth addicts. So we thought, wow, we need to have this Christian-based yeah. recovery ministry. We tried it. It did not work because they were getting more out of our services right. that was ministering freedom to them. Then they were out of that, right? You know. Yeah. So it's it's really a a be who you are. You don't necessarily yeah. have to try to be what that church is doing. Or it's powerful. Yeah. That, that's a huge that's a huge lesson. Yeah. You know, and yeah. just that's uh, you know I've started. I've we've quit other ones. You know, we've we've had a little group with you know where uh, moms with babies you know got mm -hmm. together and it just it was this little bitty like. Uh, click of a few mm. ladies doing arts and crafts and you know and I'm like you know this isn't really lining up with our vision <laughs> yeah so there's there's three things that I ask myself at the end of every year and I and I pull all of our elders together mm -hmm. and and I incorporate them in this in the process of these questions say what do we need to quit what do we need to start and what do we need to keep doing you know and I ask them and uh, what I do is I, I give them uh, index cards and an envelope, and I and I give them their assignments, and they have to go off by themselves. We'll we'll go off and get in a place, right. and there'll be a certain point in our time together where we break away and we're right. by ourselves, so we don't interact with each other mm -hmm. at this point to come up with an answer. And I say, what do you think? What what are we doing? What's the one thing that we're doing great? Right. What is the one thing we're doing horrible? Yeah. Then we come back to the table and everybody shares what they wrote. Wow. And so out of that, we begin to discuss what are we doing well? Okay. What are we doing horrible? Uh, what do we need to quit doing? Uh -huh. What do we need to keep doing? What do we need to start doing? Right. You know? That's so. It, and those are usually, it <clears throat> seems like it'd be incredibly productive. They are. Yeah. Yeah. They are. And help set some vision for the next year, the course, and whatnot. It does. And, and it really. A lot of times I already know the answer before we go in there. Sure. But it, it helps them work through the process. Yeah. So it's not just like uh, me telling people, let's quit doing this and let's start doing that. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? It's like together I, together the team came up with this. Yeah. And we all made this decision together. Would you say that you like to lead out of a, of course, setting vision and direction, but team mentality of... Definitely, we're, we're, we're definitely a team church. Sure. Um, you know, I am the leader. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, but we are a team church. I mean, there's, n there's no way we could be who we are 
without it. Right. You know. Yeah. And I have an incredible te team. And I'm so thankful for them. You know, they work hard. Everybody takes ownership of their areas of responsibility. Mm -hmm. Uh, but at the same time, we're for each other. Yeah. We care about what's happening with the other person, what's happening with their area, you know, so yeah. it's not, we don't have within our church, we don't have, it's us against them. Sure, sure. You know, and it's never, I'm mm. a leader having to fight for my part of the church. Right, right. Because that part of the church doesn't value us. There's none of that. You know, how, how have how have you, as the leader, fostered that within your staff? Um, well, it's just who I am. Because okay. whatever's in me is going to be in every, sure. everything else. Sure. I care about what what goes on in our children's ministry. I care, care about the quality of our children's mm -hmm. ministry. I care about the quality of our youth ministry. I right. care about our worship. You know, I care about the way our building looks. Yeah. You know, yeah. I care about how people are greeted. I care about the parking lot. You know, yeah. uh, what what people encounter when they turn on uh, this property. I tell our team. The altar call starts as soon as they turn in the parking lot. Yeah. It doesn't start at the end of my message. Right, right. You know, it starts when the car turns on the parking lot. Right. You know, so I really try to incorporate a mentality, not within just the pastors and 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 staff members, but within their entire church of people who serve. Mm -hmm. That uh, it's it's the big picture. Sure. You know, everything we do matters. Right. And a lot of times. Uh, the parts of our body that people see mm -hmm. get the most compliments, mm. but that aren't, but that isn't necessarily the most important parts. Exactly. You right. know what I oh, mean? Yeah. Oh yeah. Because I've, I mean, really, if you think about the human body, um, the most important part of a human body is the parts that you don't see. It's oh, the it's internal sure. parts, yeah, the internal, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and there are people who are in our church that serve on our team that nobody sees, nobody right. knows they're there. Right. But if they ever start to break down or get unhealthy, uh, the whole church notices something's not right. Sure. Something's not, you know. Sure. And so uh, I really just try to paint a big picture. You know, right. every everybody's important, even the people you don't see. The greeter's right. important. The usher's right. important. The guys in the parking lot are important. Right. You know, the guys in the media booth are important. Yeah. The sound guy's important. Yeah. You know. I, I, do you guys intentionally... Um, uh, you have a very welcoming culture here, mm -hmm. you know, um, the people that you see coming in, um, uh, anywhere from drug addicts, old gang members, uh, you know, to lack of a better term, regular folk as well, you know, just people yeah. coming in. Um, and you've created a, a really great community of people. <clears throat> um, are there things that you've done intentionally for that? You know, I, I wish I could tell you I was that smart. <laughs> that, you know, hey, uh, strategically, I yeah. said, man, I'm going to have this extremely diverse church. Sure. Um, so I wasn't that strategic, but it is the it is the kind of person I am. Yeah. I'm um, to me, if I had a church that was all the same thing. Right. To me, that'd be boring. Right. If we were all white, that would be boring. If I, right. if I had a church that was full of a bunch of white guys wearing khaki pants and boat shoes and I would be I'd be like, gag me with a spoon. <laughs> You know, right. and uh, uh, yeah. our church is yeah. extremely diverse, you yeah. know, and, and I love it. Sure. You know, um, so I think the reason that the church is like that is because I'm like that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because um, for me, for living here in Southern California, I don't stick into one little demographic of a neighborhood. I don't go right. to eat at my safe little restaurant. I'm constantly exploring. Yeah. I'm looking for communities, different ethnic groups, different experiences, and I find these little villages and sure. little areas or blocks, you know, where there's different culture. Yeah. And, and I go in those cultures and I hang out. I get a coffee. I sit on, you know, I look at them. I watch them. I eat right. in their restaurants. Right. And I'm constantly doing that. Yeah. And I think as a result of that, our church is like that. Right. You know, we're, uh, you know, like you said. I mean, we have all kinds of nationalities. Right. Uh, we have all different kinds of social backgrounds, mm -hmm. you know, uh, interest. You know, we've got skaters. We've got hardcore gang members, people that were thugs, sure. you know, uh, people who were strippers or prostitutes, as well as professional athletes and, yeah. you know, uh, 
you can see a well-known entertainer in our church. You yeah. know, you can see people, you know, who are famous musicians in our church. Um, one day, we had, this is no joke, we had a service one day <clears throat> where there was a Bentley in the parking lot and three shopping carts with pe people's personal belongings. Wow. At church. At church. Yeah, wow. and everything in between. Wow. And I just said, man, that's the way church should be. Yeah. You know, we have everything from a Bentley to a shopping cart. Right. And there's times I look out at our church and I'll see uh, a well-known music producer yeah. sitting next to uh, a heroin addict. Wow. And an actress sitting next to that person. Wow. Sitting next to a homeless person. Yeah. And none of them know each other. And they don't know who each other, yeah. who they are. Right, right. I know who they are. Sure. You know, and I'm just like, this is beautiful. It's incredible. Yeah. It's incredible. Future plans for you guys. Planning churches, something coming up in L.A. How, how is that coming yeah. about? What's, what's going on with it? Yeah, we're, uh, we're going to be launching an extension service in downtown L.A. Uh, coming up actually in two months. And so we're working hard for that. I mean, down, it, a lot of people said, man, you got to go to the west side. Go to the west side of L.A. Yeah, that's right, where right. more money is. That's where people are prettier sure. and stuff like that. <laughs> and, uh, people are yeah. prettier. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And don't go to downtown L.A. Yeah. Why do you want to go downtown L.A.? Skid yeah. Row's down sure, there. Sure, sure. But, you know, there's a whole revitalization of going on in downtown L.A. Tons of young adults, tons of lofts, tons of apartments. Right. you got universities down there. You, you know, and the culture down there is so extremely diverse. Right. I mean, I go down there. Uh, I try to go down there once a week now, okay. and just and just begin to just immerse myself so in the in. culture yeah. and meet people. And uh, you can see like three hipsters walking down the sidewalk next to two homeless guys. Yeah. You know, yeah. and then there might be a businessman behind them. Sure. And I'm like, this is beautiful. This is what I want our church to look like. Yeah, yeah. You know, I want hipsters, homeless, and business people. Right. <laughs> you know? That's awesome. Now, yeah. was that born out of a, this is a great emerging area that we should plant a church in? Or was it, you feel like the Lord spoke to you one day? Or, Well, the Lord did speak to me about planting churches in the major cities of the world. Boom. And, um, and so when it came to starting a, an extension service in L.A., a bunch of people did try to influence yeah, me, go to the, the West Side. Right. And I said, well, I really feel in my heart we're supposed to go downtown. Right. I'm like, man, the west side, the west side. you got to go to the west side. Yeah, yeah. And so I started looking to the west side. I probably invested two months of trying to explore the right, west side. Right. But it just it wouldn't come alive in me. Wow. And then every time I would think about downtown L.A., it would come back to life. Yeah. And I just had to look at everybody and say, you know what? This may not make sense to you, but we got to go downtown. Wow. <laughs> you know? That's great, man. And... uh and so as soon as I started focusing my attention back downtown, yeah. immediately it just lit back up on the inside of me. Oh, that's so cool. And, uh, and so that's where we're going. That's incredible. You know? That's incredible. Yeah. Wow. Jay, you, your heart is blowing me away, dude. You just mm -hmm. have a, a great heart. Uh, incredible, incredible work going on here. I'm just, thank you so much. Oh, thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. I appreciate what you guys are doing, man. Think international, you guys are off the hook. We're, man, we, we, you know, we're, yeah. just, we're doing what we believe the Lord wants us to, so for sure. Sanctuary Church, Think International. Yeah.